And now let's move on to the second part and uh, I will be constructing a inter an application that can uh, help you deform an object. So the first step, we still uh, load our mesh. Uh, we still uh, import a library and then we load a mesh. Here we're using this uh, libigl function to, to load a uh, tetrahedral mesh. Uh, so uh, tetrahedral mesh gives three matrices. Uh, they are vertices, as we see before, is coordinates, and T is a matrix uh, of n by four. So because it's composed of tetrahedra, each tetrahedra has uh, four vertices. And then there's familiar F, and when we plot VF, we see the hand. Uh, and we can also plot T. This will uh, just show all the faces in the tetrahedra. So if you zoom in and go into the interior of the finger, you will notice that it's not empty, but instead it's filling with tetrahedra. And uh, one thing we, we are able to do is we can use a slicing. Uh, if we slice this and reshape to 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 the uh, n by three, then we have all the points inside. Uh, ordered in the specific way such that uh, such that these two plots are going to be the same. So what happens here is that uh, this slicing is putting all the all is duplicating every all the vertices from different tests. Uh, and what this is going to help us is that uh, we can actually now def define a shrink function. This shrink function will, uh, will we can take in v and t, and uh, we can compute all this. We can compute the bar center of uh, v and t. So if we slice this and uh, subtract by very center and multiply by some factor, and then translate back, we get a, a, a shrinking functionality. So VT, uh, we're going to still reshape it. Notice that we need to make them same uh, the broadcasting to. And also uh, this, this final result. And this essentially we're, we're duplicating everything and uh, multiply by a factor of uh, 0 0.5. And in addition, we can also try to have a uh, this is a, just a small demonstration of the versatility linear work this matrix operations will provide. But without further ado, let's try to set some boundary conditions. Since we don't have drawing capability and that's usually uh, pretty painful to set up, uh, we are going to try an alternative pipeline. Uh, we're gonna use some Python widgets, ipy widgets. 
and we can have we're going to construct a UI for painting. Let's call it paint UI. Uh, we will just start by this simplicity itself. We will plot the mesh, and in addition, we will plot a sphere. So uh, I'm just using this handy uh, library to have a uh, mesh at hand. So this is just giving me a sphere. And I'm adding this mesh uh, to on top of the original hand mesh. And I'll give it color of uh, 100, which means it's red. Or I can, I can also do green. Uh, notice that I only see the sphere because I have, uh, it's too big. So I will just make it smaller and uh, maybe maybe making it to look more uh, continuous. Okay, so this is a, a nice shading. And next I will try to, uh, I will, uh, write a function this function takes a uh, radius x y and z uh, and what this function will do it it will it will update the object uh, with id one that means the sphere and they update the vertices as by its radius uh, it 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 move it it scales and translates the sphere we are having so it's multiplied by radius and uh, translate by XYZ. And then I will have the mesh plot interact functionality of this function and the red will be become a float slider, a slider of uh, mean equal to 0.01 and max equal to one. Uh, it should have a default value, let's say 0 0.1. And then there will be x. Uh, let's say mean 0, max 1, value 0 0.1. So the, the same thing can happen for y and z. So what this function essentially does is that it gives a it gives a uh, three slider bars below this mesh. So if I change radius, uh, it becomes larger, and if I move x, y, and move z, it changes the uh, where it is. And using this, I will be able to locate some of the verses uh, that I'm interested in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this sphere to some positions I like. And uh, visually set, for example, I'm going to set this finger as the boundary condition. And I'm going to record this information and put it, put it into the FEM software. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna uh, use something like uh, this function member variable. It, it works somewhat like static variable. So every time this function is updated, it will uh, update this member variable forward. And I also want to have a global recording uh, that's empty initially, but we'll support some of my recordings. Uh, to make this happen, I will have a new button. Uh, this button should have a description. Let's call it record. And uh, a function, a callback function of button clicker can be here. And, uh, if when, whenever I click this button, it will just 
say uh, it will just append the current sphere coordinate to my recording. Okay, I execute this again. My button is not showing. I need to set the uh, callback button clicker. And uh, in addition, I need to uh, also display. This display is a is a function from uh, uh, in, in the Jupyter notebook. I will just display the button. And okay, you see there's a record. So I will first move this uh, dot to I want to move it to wrist, but apparently I cannot because the range is uh, not correctly set. The easiest uh, way that I, I can do this is just I can try to move this mesh. Uh, I, I can the mean with axis zero means the lower left corner in the bounding box. So I, I center that to the origin and uh, divide by the max, which makes this uh, lives in a standard cube. So after this operation, my max of V is one and uh, the minimum is zero. Uh, this, this makes it easy for me to work on this afterwards. And now I can, I can probably restart it again and uh, make sure everything goes well. And as we can see, this uh, red is now in a relatively good position. So I will move X, move Y, Z. And I will record. Just, just to have a check uh, here, we can have recording. Notice that it already has one variable. And then I pull this Y up, uh, change also the radius and the X coordinates. Do a bit Z and then record. Now my recording variable has uh, two spheres and uh, the next thing I can do is I will use that to set up my boundary conditions and for this for this purpose I'm using this uh, polyfam library that's uh, pretty easy to use so you just have a uh, solver and you, you, you need to set a mesh uh, the the interesting thing that would you you need to do is you need to set the boundary condition. So so let's set boundary side set from uh, very center. The parameter here is gonna be a, a lambda function. It's taking p e. and let's say it default default return to zero. And uh, for each for, for each uh, component in this recording, uh, it's actually containing variables of radius and uh, x and x, y, and z. Uh, let's say the normally start with one because our default is zero. So if uh, the norm of current p minus x, y, and z is smaller than radius, then we can return i. Just to check whether this is correct, uh, we have a function of solver dot get, get boundary side sets. Should return a v, a f, a color. 
So we can plot this with C equal to uh, CI. And this doesn't look correct. Yeah, the reason is this actually need to start with two, one and two. This indices starts with one, and uh, here we have a mesh with two regions marked. Okay, this is uh, this looks good now, and then we initialize the problem, the polyfem problem, uh, and we can set the displacement. the The first wrist wrist uh, component where we're gonna fix it. And the, the finger component, we're going to set some force uh, with one Newton on the x direction. And settings, it's uh, just default and set a PD to be uh, linear elasticity. Uh, after this, we can set material parameters. Uh, we can set uh, some Young's modulus and uh, Poisson ratio. And associate the problem together with uh, the polyfan problem. And we can feed this uh, settings and solve. This is uh, now now it's finished. We can get some get the solution. Uh, so this solution is only gonna uh, sample on some points in in the finite element space. So we're going to get dis uh, disconnected triangles. This is where they are. And uh, if, you, if you add the displacement, you will see it's, it's slightly changing. Uh, additionally, we can get the We can get the sample of von Mises, von Mises stress. But if you if you look at it, uh, all the triangles are actually disconnected. Uh, so we're gonna use a simple NumPy trick. We're gonna uh, choose choose only the unique rows and uh, use this information to unique ID and uh, unique inverse, and we're going to use this information to slice them. Uh, just uh, in case there's some. Uh, numerical discrepancies we can set we can cast it into a large int to to be able to preserve eight digits of okay. the duplicate tolerance eight digits and now we have uh, we can have unique unique uh, solution points with unique And the triangles are going through a, a inverse uh, selection process with colors of Bonnie's stress. And something is wrong here. Only the integer scalar and the race can be uh, 
So just uh, to easily find out what is the problem, we can see this is uh, this is working correctly. So something has happened on the, on the last part, and we're gonna see that this is uh, not not working. Uh, that that is actually because this get this get sample misses stress. Uh, the misses average actually returns uh, a tuple. And our uh, one miss stress is actually a tuple. The second, the second component we, we don't really care. Uh, and now it's supposed to behave in a way. So we're we're looking at the hand where the middle finger got put to the right, and the stress uh, are showing in the bottom of this. And that's how we can prototype such an application in Python.